So uh, welcome to our today's class. Uh, that is a risk analysis in capital budgeting. Still, uh, we are on that topic. So when we finalize uh, on what we, uh, is remaining, now from our previous class, we were on what we call the methods of measuring risk. Methods of measuring risk. And on the methods of measuring risk, we begin with the EMV. We also talked about the standard deviation. Standard deviation. We also talked over uh, the coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation. We also talked over uh, what we call the decision tree. Decision tree. In our previous class, we talked of uh, the sensitivity analysis. Sensitivity analysis. So for today's class, I want we talk of the simulation analysis. Simulation analysis. Let's talk of uh, the simulation analysis. Now, this is now where we are remaining with three of them. So let's talk over uh, those, the three that are remaining. The three that in this case are remaining. So let's begin with, uh, the, by defining what in this case we mean. Now, for the simulation as analysis, you just say it is a systematic, this is a systematic duplication Duplication, this is the systematic, this is the systematic duplication, duplication of project outcomes, project outcomes, project outcomes by use of random numbers, by use of random numbers and probability, by use of random numbers and probability by use of random numbers and uh, probabilities. By use of random numbers and probabilities. You see, uh, uh, you write also and say, the concept of NBV will be applicable. The concept of NBV will be applicable. The concept of NBV will be applicable. Will be applicable. In evaluating the project, in evaluating the project, in evaluating the project. Now, steps followed. Let's talk of the steps. The steps followed. Number one, you identify the objectives. Number one, identify the objective. Identify the objective. Number two, you develop a probability distribution. Develop a probability distribution. Develop a probability distribution. That is the Monte Carlo. That is the Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo. And then the last one. Number number three, de uh, develop a simulation table. Develop a simulation table. Develop a simulation table. Now, let's do an example for us to understand what in this case we mean. Can I have an example that is on the simulation analysis? on the simulation analysis. Simulation analysis. So we have an example. I want we do in the sitting of November 2016. November 2016, 
That should be equation number one B. Equation one B. November 2016, equation one B. November 2016, question 1b. When we do that as our assign, our example in this case. Now, SKB Limited is uh, considering a proposal to manufacture a new drug named Millennium. The drug will be manufactured using a machine which will cost shillings 13 million. Then the cash flows and drunk life relating to millennium have been estimated as stochastic in exogenous variables with the following distribution. We have the annual after tax cash flows probability. And then we also have the drunk life in years and we also have the probability. The minimum required rate of return from this investment is 16%. The company has approached you as a financial management expert to perform an, to perform an uh, analysis of the above project. You are required using the following number, random numbers, perform a 10 simulation runs of the net present value of this project. We've been given there, and then also determine the expected NBV for this project, so so. So the first thing is uh, just to identify the objective. An objective is always is to maximize on what? Profits. Where in this case they have gain. And where we have gain in this case is where we have a positive word, NBV. So, so. Number two is for us to develop what we call a Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo. And our Monte Carlo, we will develop for both the annual after tax uh, cash flows and also the drunk life in what? Yes, so I'll begin with the annual, annual after tax cash flows to develop the model, model Carlo, sour sour. That is the annual after tax. So this is generally the profits after tax. So we love the profits after tax. I will love their probability. Sorry. So we love uh, the profit after tax, and then we love their probability, the probability, the probability, yeah. Love the probability. This is the probability. We'll also have the accumulated probability probability and then we'll have what we call the what the rate so so we love that rate so in this case i begin with the probabilities that we've been given 1000 we've been given 1500 right 2000 2500 we also have 3000 we have 35, we have 4,000, right? Then there are probabilities we've been given, 0, 0.0 or 2. We have 0 0.03, 0, 0.015, 0 0.15, 0 0.30, 0 0.20. And then we also have zero point. Now you accumulate the probability. Let me just write it in full, accumulative probability. So you are just getting the summation of the probability, which in this case, this will be zero point, 
zero two zero point zero five zero point two zero zero point zero point six five zero point nine uh, eight and then we have one point so we have the range the range now in this case since we have two decimal places we assume is up to 100 so we are using them as percentages so as how so this means is two so as how so you will just begin from where zero zero to the value that is be, before the this end of that part which in this case it will be zero what are we together then you come from now where you've uh, ended here yeah, this is zero two two this is zero four sour sour the number before this value here and then next is zero five two 19. This is uh, 22, 34, 20, uh, 35 to 64, 65 to 84, and this is 85 to 99. That is the Monte Carlo for annual after tax cash flows. Then we also go to the other one for the drunk life. We also do the same. So I will have the drunk life. We also have their probability, right? We'll also have the accumulated probability. Probability. And then we'll also have the, the rate. So we begin with the first one. What is our what is our drunk life here? We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine what? What is their probability? Zero point, zero five, zero point, one zero, zero point, three zero, zero point, zero point, one five, zero point, one zero zero three zero point zero get the summation the cumulative this is zero point zero five zero point one zero point four zero point seven zero point eight zero point nine zero point nine and then zero one point zero zero sour sour and if there is a question you ask as we also proceed for those who are you know online kindly test i will be able to see if you have in any question now then from there we look for the range this is uh, i've said since it is two decimal places we assume they are we make them percentages so this is five percent so it will be zero 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 two zero four zero five two fourteen fourteen two i mean fifteen to forty four forty five to sixty sixty nine uh seventy two eighty four two eighty five two ninety five two seven and then 98 to 99, 98 to 99. That is now the simulation word, the, uh, the mode caro. Then now our required was uh, for the step number three is for now as we prepare what we call the simulation word, the simulation table, so as how. So mainly in this case, we are using the concept of NBV. And uh, what you need to know is that for you to get the NBV is the present value cash inflow minus the present value cash outflow. So this means that we have to look for our own ways on how do we get the present value cash inflow 
Then we discount, the, uh, we first get the cash flows from here. Also. Then we discount using the, the, because these are annual cash flows. Drunk life is for us to know the years. Also. And then we'll be able to get the what? The NVV. So, so. Now, this is what will be. We were told the simulation table. I can have it here. Simulation. Simulation table. The simulation table. So, so. The simulation table. So, in this case, I, we've been told that we perform how many runs? 10 runs, so, so. so I will have the runs there, which they should be 10. Then I will also have the random numbers, numbers, the random number, right? Now this random number, they will help us to know what is our annuity, so, so. let me think this one is not, but, uh, what is our annuity? So it will help us to get the annuity. When I talk of annuity, Nikumanisha, the cash flows that will be generated for each year. And then it will also be able to give us the year. Sour, sour. After giving us the year, we will be able to know what is our present value interest factor since this will be an annuity of annuity at what rate? We were given the cost of capital, 16%. It will depend on the year that we love. So after getting that, this will help us to know what is our present value cash. Then we learn the present value cash outflow. Then for us to get the N and BB. That is how in this case we'll have it. So remember, we'll only do 10 simulation words. Lungs. Sour, sour. Because we have to know the annuity. We have to know how many years these cash flows will be generated. And then it will help us to know the discounting factor. And then after that, it will also help us to understand what we call the what? The present value cash inflow. So we can begin. So now we have uh, the number of runs. They should be 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, so. We were given the random numbers. The random numbers we've been given where? We have 53, 9, 7. Appealing. 9903 1933, 5852, right? I want to be moved together after that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping we are already together to that point, right? Now, we now proceed. Now, what will help us to know is these random numbers. Now, the first two will represent what we call the annual after tax. We'll just come and look where it erages. Where it erages, it will give us our what? The energy. So, so, are we together? Now, this other one will represent the, what we call the drunk life. So, we'll also come and look where it lies. Where it lies, it will give us the what? The drunk life. So, so, so let's begin. We are 53. 53 will lie in between 35 to, so meaning that our annual car annuity will be how, how much? 3,000. So this will be 3,000. Are we together up to that? Then we want to know our year. So to Nakuja Apa, 
the years. Remember, these are years. So the years will be given by, that is 97. 97 lies between where? Nine years. So what's up? That is the nine years. So what's up? So you now go to the annuity table, since this is an annuity. Annuity table is the second table. The annuity table is the second table. So what's up? So you go to 16% in year nine. Niambi na kupe angapi. 16. What you need to know for you to get the present value cash inflow is annuity present value interest factor of annuity 16% in period. And that is how we'll be getting the present value cash inflow. So it is giving you how much? 16% in year, year nine. Yes? Four point sixty sixty five. So you more try that to know what is our present value cash inflow. Thirteen. Eight nineteen point. What was our initial investment or initial cost of the machine? On the first line, it was that in. So we are using shillings in thousand. So it will be that in. So in this case, what, how do we get the NBV? Present value cash inflow minus the present value cash outflow, which in this case it will be. 819.5, right? We go to the second one. 16, where does it lie? The upper, where we are? Two, oh, oh, this is the six, which is 3,500. This is 10? Yes, you know it. So, so, 99. So you go to the annuity table, which is the second table. Niambi na kupea ngapi. Give you how much? Four point eight. Three, three, two, right? So in that case, you can multiply that five hundred by that. And then I could pay and up it. Sixteen. Nine, sixteen point two. Our annuity is that in. So when I minus that, this will be that nine, sixteen point what? Two. Go to the other one. The annual cash flow that is thirty. Na lai wapi? Twenty-five hundred. What about eight a one? Eight a one in this case is lying between year seven, right? Year seven. Na lai na na kupenga pe. Zero three. Naiona Bizuri. Ngalia the one that is clear. Should be zero three eight six, right? Multiply by twenty five hundred. Ten zero ninety six point minus thirteen thousand. Ita ita kupe angapi negative twenty nine zero three point. Now, 2019 in a lie wapi, 2000, right? 
Zero nine in a lie wapi. Zero nine is four. So look at four. Is giving you how much? Seven nine eight two multiplied by two thousand. Fifty five. So minus thirteen thousand. Beta kufia negative. Zero three point. That one, that one is lying on 20, 2500. What about 67? 67 here is lying in between here, year six. So what is for year six? 3.68, multiply by 2500. Ninety-two, eleven, seven, five. Minus thirteen. Negative that seven eight eight two five. Right, eight one. Now you copy. Eight one equal thirty five hundred. What about seven seventy? Seven to Konai Apa is four point zero three eight six. More try that, it's a copy and copy. Fourteen thirty five point one minus thirteen thousand eleven thirty five and one. Uh huh. Yes, for that eight, you copy. Three, three thousand seventy five. Now, wapi is it seven? Seven. So, this is four point zero three eight six. Multiply three thousand by that. How much is it giving you? Fellow, one, one fifteen point eight. Minus that in here. Negative, right? Eh? Point two. We go to 48. 48 in a lie wapi. Yes. 3,000. Eight Is it seven? So this is 4.0386. This will be 12.1.8, 13,000. So this will still remain 884 point. Uh, 90, 90 up I call 4, 4,000. Uh-huh, 33. Ngapi apa? We have five. Ngapi? Two seven four. More try by that. It's a copy and copy. Thirteen zero nine seven point minus thirteen thousand nine seven point two fifty eight fifty eight equal three three thousand. Fifty-two, six, right? Which is three point four seven. Three thousand three point six four seven. Copy and copy. Eleven zero fifty-four point. Uh huh. Minus thirteen. Nine. Get now the total for this. Get the total. Generally, the total NVB. What is our total NVB?
or is the total NBB? Negative 11, 8.1.65. So our expected NBB, it will just be this negative 11, 8.1.65. You have gone how many runs? You just divide by the number of runs, which in this case, it will be negative 184.165. And that is our expected NVV. And then that is what you are required to look for. And that is how you were to do that question. So any question on that? Anyone who is having a question? Then uh, you can copy, you can copy the question. Copy, copy. There are some values. I don't know whether you can be able to see them. These ones on this slide, are you able to identify them? I'm asking uh, those uh, online. Okay. So uh, we can, um, you, uh, you will do this as an assignment in December 2021 as a pilot paper. December 2021, I uh, want you, the pilot paper, I want you to do question number three. December 2021, question three. December 2021, question. Question number three. So let's get to another one. Let's get to the last, uh, the, the other one is what we call the certainty equivalent coefficient. Certainty equivalent coefficient. The certainty equivalent coefficient. Certainty equivalent coefficient. Certainty equivalent coefficient. Continuity equivalent coefficient. Now, what we mean in this case, and uh, certainty equivalent coefficient, the cash flows are normally assigned what we call an equivalent coefficient factor, which signifies the risk less cash flows. So, so it will signify or will represent the risk less cash flows. Generally, what you are very sure of ourselves. So you can write and say, under certainty equivalent coefficient, under this method, under this method, the cash flows are assigned. Under this method, 
the cut flows are assigned under this method. The cash flows are assigned. An equivalent coefficient, an equivalent coefficient factor, an equivalent coefficient factor, an equivalent coefficient factor, which represents which represents the riskless cash flows, which represents the riskless cash flows, the riskless cash flows. Like for example, if we talk of 0 0.7, .7, means that we are, means that we are 7% sure of the cash flows. We are. 70% sure of the cash flows. We are 7% sure of the cash flows. We are 7% sure of the cash flows. That is what we mean in this case. Let's just have an example. And have an example. You write this one. You can just write this. Right and say, consider, consider a project, consider a project with an initial investment, consider a project with an initial investment, consider a project with an initial investment, consider a project with an initial investment of shillings 100,000, Initial investment of shillings a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand, and it's expected to generate the following cash flows, and is expected to generate the following cash flows. So I will have the year. We love the cash flows. So year one, two. Three, four, five. The cash flows is thirty five thousand. Yeah, thirty five thousand. Thirty five thousand. Thirty five thousand. And then we have thirty five thousand. Now, our certainty equivalent coefficient factor this is zero point nine, zero point eight. 0 0.7, 0 0.3, and 0 0.2. What we mean 90% of these represents the riskless cash flows. So as how required, required, required. Evaluate the project using the equivalent coefficient factor. Evaluate the project using the equivalent coefficient factor, using the equivalent coefficient factor. Now, the first thing is uh, what you do, you first look for the NBB before adjusting the what? The equivalent coefficient factor. So, so. And then we know our NBB should be given by present value cash inflow. You minus the present value cash outflow. So, so the present value cash inflow, you minus the present value cash outflow, right? So now, how do you get the present value cash inflow? When you look at these cash flows, all of them are the same, right? So in this case, you will take the annuity, you multiply by the present value interest factor. I've said what is the cost of capital. I've not indicated the cost of capital, right? You can indicate on the equation the cost of capital. Cost of capital is 10% and risk free rate is 8%. The cost of capital is 10% and risk free rate is 8%. 8%. So this is what I've said. So you will get the present value cash inflow by getting the annuity. Present value interest factor of annuity, 10% in how many years? 
five years. Sawa sawa. In our case here, it is 35,000. You multiply by, you go to the annuity tables. Because the reason to make same IVO is because the cash flows in this case are what? the same. So in this case, it will be 3.7908. Sawa sawa. If you multiply by that, what is our present value cash inflow? One thirty two six seventy. Less the present value cash flow. What was our initial investment? A hundred thousand. So what will be our NVV? Yes, six seventy eight. That is how you get the NVV. Now, after adjustment, now, after adjustment is now when you adjust the cash flows. And uh, in this case, we, because we are very sure, it means that the cash flows are what? Risk what? Risk free. So, so. And therefore, since they are risk free, we discount them using the risk free what? Risk free rate. So I will have after adjustment. And I will also look for the NVV. So, so after the adjustment. So in this case, the muffin. So we love the year. I will have the riskless cash flows. Cash flows. Then present value interest factor at what rate? Yeah. Eight percent to get the present value cash inflow. Right? So I begin with year one. Year one, it will be thirty-five thousand. What we are sure of is 90, 0.9%. Ita ngapi? That one, 500. Ya pili ni 0 0.8. 28. Then we also have 35,000. The multiply by 0 0.7. 24, 500. And then number four is that 5,000, you multiply by 0 0.3. Tell me, 10, 5. Then we also have number five, which is that 5,000, you multiply by, which is 7,000. So since now the cash flows will not be the same, we discount them using the first word. So you go to the first table. It will be 8% in year one. 0 0.9 to 59. 0 point 7, 9. Uh-huh. Five. Uh-huh. Six, eight, zero. Now multiply. Multiply. And nine. Uh huh. Twenty four. Mm hmm. Mm hmm.
Eight. Yes. Point zero. What is our present value cash outflow? Hundred thousand. What is our NBV? Negative fourteen. Point nine. And then the advice in this case. The project is what? Risky. Project is risky. Since NVV after adjustment is what? NVV after adjustment. Is negative. That is how to do for that. So you can copy that. So let's do another question. When we do, we do the question, question in the, the sitting of uh, November or before that. April 2022. April, uh, April, uh, August 2022. Yeah, August 2022. August 2022. We need to do question number. August 2022. August 2022. And do question number 1A. August 2022, question 1A. Now, a project requires an initial investment of 500,000, it is a The expected amount of two hundred thousand. The business is five thousand per annum. So required. The net present value of the project operating. Right? We do that. So what? How is the, how do we get the cash flows here? Mm -hmm. So how do we get the cash flows? 
or generally in this case, let me just have here. I have the here, right? For more than I have the risk less cash flows. Because for you to do that, you have to use the risk cash flows. Right? Or generally. Let me just begin by getting the risk of less cash. No. So what is our risk less cash flow? How much may be what? The firm is uh, certain between how much? And then, no. And the expected amount of how much? So we know that 200,000 is our annual cash flows. No. Okay, let me first do it this way. Let's first look for the NBV before adjusting. How much? As an before adjustment. What will be our NBV? We know NBV is the present value cash inflow minus the present value cash outflow. So our present value cash inflow will be given by what? Like in the upper to the the cost of capital. So there is no need of looking for that. Since we don't have that, let's just adjust the cash flows for promoter. So in this case, this is what I mean. To get the present value cash, uh, the NBV, we know it is the present value cash inflow minus the present value cash outflow. So and so on. Now, when you are using the certainty equivalent coefficient, is for the risk less cash flows, what you are very certain. And in our case, we are certain that, we are certain that the amount is how much? Mm -hmm. The, All right, so this is what we mean. So the cash flows here, the 200,000, as an 200,000, so I multiply by the certainty equivalent coefficient, copper motor, copper motor, should give me the what? What is the exact? Which in this case is what we've been given as what? 181. Even on a manisha. Copa moja. So in this case, it will be. What is our certainty equivalent coefficient? Zero point ninety which is generally 0.91. So, so. That is our certainty equivalent coefficient. So what about the other years? If this is for year one. Mm -hmm. It's a good about on copy. So, so. So now we can get the NBB. Once that to put the present value. So it is the annuity multiplied by the present value interest factor of annuity. The risk free rate is how much? Five. In how many years? Five years. So what we are certain is 181, 340. Motre by go to five percent in your five. Five percent in your five. From the annuity tables.
4.3 which is given you how much? Seven eight five one fifty one one forty one and eight four. There's our present value cash outflow. Three is five. So what will be our N will be? Two eight five, one point one point eight four. Is the project worthwhile? The project is worthwhile since NBV is what? Battery. So you can copy that. So we proceed. So let's now do the last one, which is the sensitivity. I mean, the scenario analysis. Scenario analysis. The last one, which is now the scenario analysis. And do the last one, which is the scenario analysis. The last one, which is the scenario analysis. So for the scenario analysis, you can just indicate and say, for the scenario analysis, you see, See, this is the use of horizon analysis. This is the use of the horizon analysis. This is the use of horizon analysis to project the yield, the use of horizon analysis to project the yield, to project the yield stroke total returns yield so total returns and a reinvestment rates and a reinvestment rates see scenario analysis is more relevant than sensitivity analysis scenario analysis is more relevant than the sensitivity analysis because because Sensitivity analysis assumes variables because sensitivity analysis assumes variables are independent. Variables are independent. Variables are independent. Now let's do one question in May 2012, question number 3B. May 2012, question 3B. May 2012, question 3B. May 2012, question 3B. May 2012, question 3B. If you don't have the past paper, you check from the group. I've shared it there. 
you don't have the past paper check from the group is shared there now the management of uh, the the financial manager of top limited expects the earning before interest and tax of shillings 5 million in the current financial year the company pays interest rate of 10% per annum on long term loans of 20 million the company has 1000 ordinary shares and corporate tax rate of 20% the, my, the financial manager is uh, currently analyzing or examining scenarios. Scenario one, a case where the earnings before depreciation and tax is 25 less than the expected. Scenario two, where the earnings before depreciation interest and tax is 25 higher than the expected, and then the re you are required the earning per share under scenario one and scenario two, and when there is no change. So to get the earning per share, we'll talk of this when uh, I will be talking about what? The financing decisions. Where is uh, we talking of the special topics in financing and a point of indifference? So to get the earning per share is given by earning before interest and tax minus interest. One minus the taxation, you divide by the number of what? Ordinary shares. Divide by the number of ordinary shares, our salary. So we begin with the first one, when there is no change. What was the earnings before interest and tax? So the first thing that I will look for is the interest. We got my pay of the loan and the interest rate. What was the interest rate? And the loan was of how much? 20 million. That means the interest would be? So I'll now take the, to get the earning per share, this is when there, are no, there is no change. When there is no, no change, right? So when there is no change, we'll take earning before depreciation, before interest and tax in Gapi. So it is 5 million minus, one minus taxation tax we were given as what and then you divide what was the number of shares in million one million so in akupe angape yes 2.1 that was how we have scenario two Scenario two, what is happening? The, the scenario one, sorry. The earning before interest and tax is expected to decrease by how much? So it will be 70 of 5 million. Now, Kupang Abi, 3.75. So to get the earning per share, to be 3.75 minus one minus the taxation divided by one. One point two two five, right? Then we have scenario what? Two. What is happening with earning before interest and tax? by 25%, so which is 5 million, will be 6.2. So our earning per share will be minus two, one minus the taxation, divided by 1 million. 
Sini ama kuna soal ingine hapo. Ha? Degree of what? Degree. Sini yo. It is degree of what? The degree of financial gearing. We will talk of this in special topic in financing. How much we, yeah, let's just do it when we'll be doing the special topics in financing and leverage. I'll do that. That was how. Yeah, because in this case, that is on a different topic. So with that, uh, I think we can just proceed from there in our next class. We'll uh, do now on what we call the replacement analysis. Uh, so, yes. So let's just proceed from there in our next class.